they will push the water out. Yeah. So the third wave, electric pump is introduced. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very uh, historical year, 1961. So FEMA uh, introduced this machine from vertical workflow to horizontal workflow with electric pump. So here the workflow is not good. You want how you design the bar with a round machine. So that's why they put it all vertical and the boiler everything go vertical. Add to horizontal, yeah. So one thing, uh, Italian people, they always follow tradition. So nine bar pressure was from here, transfer to the pump. And it's become a tradition, a standard to follow. Uh, if you want a traditional Italian espresso, you must have nine bar. It starts from here. So this is the uh, very iconic group head design used until today. This is an E61 to uh, remember the year of the coffee machine history. And E is from the founder, Ernesto, E61. No, that one is just look like, but it's not. <laughs> so used until today, I think it's still a very good uh, group head system. So from here, now, how the really happened in the basket of the espresso extraction. Now we are going to talk about this. Yeah. So as we know, even you push your pump maximum bar, but there is no pressure here. The water has no pressure. Only the pump keep generate pressure, but there is no resistance. So the pressure here is one bar. <laughs> in the water. Uh, all the all the machine is the same. Uh, okay. <laughs> so no matter you push any button in any machine, you can see Bar, the pressure of the pump go to nine immediately. But here, no pressure. So in the beginning, the 
real pressure in coffee. We don't talk about pressure in pump now. We talk about pressure in coffee. It show around zero in the beginning when you start to brew your espresso. Even your pump go to nine bar. Uh, don't doesn't matter your machine can do pressure profile or expensive or cheap machine low price it still go through this process it's never changed mm. so you introduce water to the head space uh, the space in between shower screen and coffee puck. So here, no pressure now. Yeah. So when the water is getting full, and you continue to push water by the pump to the coffee, they create resistance. So your pressure will go up. So if you continue to push, the pressure will go to max if your grind size is correct. So it can go to max, same level as your pump. So when you continue to brew, when coffee start to coming out, so start to brew, the pressure also start to release. Mean your pressure will from max slowly, slowly, slowly reduce. Yeah. Until you finish your shot. I believe you see some situation in the coffee machine. So when you get the grind size correct, everything correct, you brew your espresso. So this is your basket. This is the spout. Okay. So you see coffee come out fast, quite fast in the beginning, and then slow down, go back to normal. So everyone experienced this before, right? Okay, so mean you go through some very uh, classic coffee machine before. Yeah. Yeah. So the classic, so one thing we want to talk about uh, what he said just now, jiggler, water, uh, water jiggler or uh, uh, water restrictor. So the speed you introduce water can affect how fast this process happen. Yeah. So if your water too fast, mean here come out very fast. So this one we call pre-infusion stage. Infusion. 
and then extraction. So if your water too fast, this process not finished, this process not finished yet, here start to pre-infusion, but uh, infusion not finished, extraction already start to happen in some part of coffee because the water flow is too fast. So you have this fast coffee in the beginning. And then why it slow down? Because start to have water come out and then it's fully wet. So now the pressure is stable. So your coffee will slow down again. This is why now all the high-end machines, they slow down their water flow rate. So flow rate means this one. You can see the water, not too fast. If you compare to some classic machine, this one is very fast. Uh, thì uh, khi mà mình uh, có những cái uh, trục chặt như vậy uh, về cái dòng chảy nó quá cao quá lớn thì đó chính là cái lý do mà những cái dòng máy đắt tiền những cái dòng máy cao cấp người ta nghĩ tới cái việc đó là giảm cái lưu lượng của dòng chảy lại ừ. thì mình thấy là hồi nãy anh kia là có mở thử cho mọi người coi thì mặc dù nó là mở tối đa rồi nhưng mà cũng khá là chạy You can see this This is like uh, the classic one Yeah This is more than 10 gram per second. How many gram, Kim? 15 gram per second. Mm. So this one, you will see this situation. Mm. Yeah. It also happened in uh, Lama Zoko Linear. Because this is the classic machine, they don't want to change the restrictor. Because the water in Europe is too hot. If they make this too small, block many problems. But there is a way, a tip for you to improve if any one of you have linear or some machine very fast. The budget way, most easy way to improve your espresso is um, change. <laughs> Because this one more whole, so the pressure can release faster than this, so it can reduce that channeling situation. Yeah, slightly improve. <laughs> So this is one way, or in the market now, you have many, many baskets nowadays. I remember uh, ID Ocean have a... Um, Pesado, yeah. Pesado, not cheap, but it's quite good. If you have a fast flow rate machine, you can 
try that basket. Pasado. But the basket is another big part. So today we focus on pressure. <laughs> so now we already go through pump pressure, coffee pressure, water flow rate. The last part, coffee flow rate. Now all the scale you buy, I believe you can, some scale now you have the flow rate per second, you can check. So you put the scale when you brew espresso, you can show you the number like uh, at this second, how many gram of espresso coming out per second. So, coffee flow rate is reflect back to coffee pressure. Yeah, they always go two way reverse. Yeah, reverse each other. So, uh, let's see. This is very not difficult to understand. Let's say traditional. You have the machine turn on nine bar like uh, the one Cime. Yeah. You turn on, start nine bar like this. Yeah. Yep. And then your coffee pressure will look like this. Because in the beginning, no pressure. But the water fill up, the pressure will go up nine bar. And when your extraction happen, it will slowly, slowly, slowly reduce like this. The espresso flow rate look like this. Depend where they start is depend on original your machine water flow rate is where. So if your machine 9 gram per second, it will start from here. So water flow fast, but when pressure go up, it will slow down because resistant. So your water go through coffee, it slow down. Yeah, so this is where the espresso flow rate and the pressure, they go reverse. Uh, actually increase by the time pressure decreased the flow rate increase in coffee So it's reflect on the visual. So when you brew espresso in the beginning, they will flow slow, drip or slow. And then you will see the flow become faster and faster and faster. So normally they start from uh, around 0 0.6 to, z to 0 0.8 gram per second. Slowly increase to the end here is about 2 gram per second. 
dòng chảy espresso thì mọi người sẽ thấy là trên thực tế nếu mà mình nhìn uh, hình ảnh của cà phê chảy ấy, thì mình sẽ thấy là nó ngược lại là ban đầu thì mình sẽ thấy là cà phê chảy ra rất là chậm rất là chậm rất là chậm sau đó thì mình thấy cà phê chảy ra đều hơn và cái dòng chảy đó nó bột mà hơn ừ. đo anh cái hình ảnh đó thì ban đầu nó sẽ chảy vô đó khoảng không đến sáu đến không đến tám gram yeah. một giây thôi và sau khi nó ổn định nó chảy đều rồi đó, thì nó sẽ là khoảng hai gram một giây yeah. If you measure this in the beginning, you get this, mean your grind size is almost there. So this is how you calibrate grind size. If you use espresso flow rate to calibrate, it will make your job easier. Yeah, I'm